And Selly has us underway. At the six yard line to Anthony Thomas. Thomas already got a crease. There he goes. And there he goes. He's gone. 94 yards on the opening play. Touchdown. Kansas State just found out what speed really means. That's a way to shock your opponent in 12 seconds. And now big shift by the Ducks. Uh, their extra point attempt, and they're going to try to go for two and got it. Dion Jordan. Eight nothing, Oregon. Well, the kick was perfect. I thought DeAnthony Thomas was actually going to step out of bounds. It was put right on the sideline, but you got to cover with discipline and get off blocks, and Kansas State was not able to do that. Guys were stuck on blocks, and DeAnthony Thomas, you just can't give him room. You've got to get bodies on him quickly because you're not going to be able to catch him if he gets in the open field. And then why not go for two 12 seconds into the game? <laughs> Deion Jordan on a pitch out. Eight nothing. Just like that. There's your time of possession right there, huh? <laughs> Jeez. Well, that is the 23rd touchdown that's happened in a minute or less for this team this year. And from the time he caught it to the time he hit the end zone, you said they wanted to make a track meet out of it. I don't think there's too many people in the world that could have caught him. You have to get bodies on him quickly. Rob Beard. To kick off. Wouldn't Tyler Lockett love to answer? He's capable. He's got a couple this year. He'll get a chance on a bounce at about the six yard line. He got outside. Lockett. Nice return. Not a touchdown, but 27 yards out to the 32 yard line. So we said that Kansas State didn't want to get behind early. Well, they're behind early, but here comes a guy that has been quite a leader for this program. I anticipate seeing a very fresh Colin Klein. When we saw him in Waco, he and the rest of their team looked a little bit worn down. He looked better after a week off when we saw him against Texas. Now he's had a month off. His body is healed up. And I expect to see him carry the football at least 20 times tonight. First down from the 32. Three wide outs. And Hubert with Klein in the shotgun. He'll throw on first down. Has it batted down at the line of scrimmage by Taylor Hart. It'll be second down and 10 as we take a look at our impact players. For Kansas State, Chris Harper's become their number one receiver. He's a former Oregon Duck. I'm sure there's a lot of emotions flying around with him tonight. Arthur Brown. Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, the middle linebacker. Ty Zimmerman, Holly Ali already talked about it. The fact that he wasn't in there against Baylor didn't help their cause too much, and he's back tonight. On second down and 10. Here comes a blitz. This time the throw is to Harper, and he's got about eight of it. It's going to be third down and short. One of the things that Kansas State is really going to have to do a good job of is getting the hands down of these defensive ends. Taylor Hart, who knocked down the first down play, is 6'6". Deion Jordan, number 96, is even taller at 6'7". Those offensive tackles are going to have to hit into those guys, get their arms down to open up lanes for those quick throws. Third down at two. This is usually Colin Klein time to run the football. You can see Oregon bunching up inside a double eagle look to try to stop the inside quarterback run. 
Wildcats 50 percent on their third down conversions this year. They'll throw and first down toss to lock it across midfield. And Kansas State with a big play there. Well that was going to be a run probably a quarterback run and a change at the line of scrimmage too many bodies inside a nice check at the line of scrimmage by Colin Klein single coverage outside and you get the first down and move the sticks. Nice throw and catch to the 48. Lockett wasn't very effective in that one loss. He was injured but he came back against Texas and made an impact in that game already has here tonight. A lot of times in this formation with the back directly behind Colin Klein it is option they want to make Oregon defend the option and test their discipline. Here it comes and the pitch to Hubert got a nice block and cut it up to the 41 yard line. When I talked to Colin Klein he said you know Oregon hasn't seen some of the stuff we do they haven't seen teams that run option where you have to really be disciplined with the back with the quarterback with the pitch man and they're going to test this Oregon defense Oregon likes to shift move get a lot of different looks on their defense but you have to be sound against the option. This is where Kansas State likes to be second down and short at the 40 yard line trying to answer the 94 yard kickoff return for a touchdown and a close a yard shy it'll be third down and one. And last time on third and two they threw let's see what they do on third and one. One of the things we see different with this Kansas State offense than what we saw the two games previous to this a new starter at left guard Nick Pitts number 50 the only senior up there started the opening game got hurt missed the rest of the season and they are really happy to have him back not just for his talent but also his leadership and maturity. Again an overloaded shotgun with Klein Hubert and Braden Wilson the fullback. Here's Colin Klein dropping back to throw again on third down and overshot Travis Tannehill. It's fourth down and one. Well I think they thought they might catch Oregon with a trick play. You know that was a run down and I think they're going to go for it on this fourth down. They tried to fake the quarterback run and catch him be behind the defense but Oregon wasn't biting at all. They only went on fourth down seven times this year but they converted five. Fourth and one here on their opening drive. Follow number 37, the fullback. Usually they like to run right behind him. He's an excellent lead blocker. That's where Callen will go. Tries to bounce it outside, and the Ducks equal to the task. They hold and take over on downs. So Kansas State goes on fourth and short Oregon's defense equal to linebacker in all of college football and that was a heck of a play right there. And so the offense for the first time tonight already with an eight point cushion to work with. Marcus Mariota at quarterback set to throw on first down and overshot his intended receiver DeAnthony Thomas. I think he ran out of his shoe too, DeAnthony Thomas better get a tighter shoelace. <laughs> You built you've really been impressed with this kid. Yeah. Well he's got all the physical tools. I mean he can really throw the football. He's fast. He's a talented runner. But the thing I like the best about him is his boys. I mean he has been unflappable all season long as a redshirt freshman. Byron Marshall in there in the backfield with him. On second down gives it off to Marshall. And the freshman got about two. Meshack Williams closed the door. All conference defensive end for all the bells and whistles and formations and substitutions that Oregon will use. They are a run forward first team. They want to run the football. They've had four games this year where they've gained over 400 yards rushing. That's where it starts if you want to defend them. Kenyon Barner going to empty out of that backfield. Mariota flushed out of the pocket. He's an excellent runner too and he got the first down at the 49 yard line. Not only a good runner he's fast yeah. he's fast and he's got a good feel he knows when he has to take off he sees a little crease coming into the game averaging over nine yards per scramble that one effective for the first down and here they go with a no huddle play action the throw is complete to the 45 the Keenan low.
A lot of different weapons for Chip Kelly to call on. First down. Some kind of a penalty against Oregon. It's going to back it up. I'll be honest with you, I didn't see the flag, but they'll walk it off back into duck territory. A legal man downfield was the call. Jake Fisher, I think, was the guilty party. So that backs him up just outside their own 45. First down at 15. Barner has yet to carry. Still hasn't. Mariota keeps it and pays the price, and Meshack Williams a loss of four. And that's the second big play he's made. Beautifully played by Meshack. I mean, he stayed right with proper leverage. Don't let him get outside. Watch him read it, maintain leverage, and then make a sure tackle. I mean, that is excellent work by the defensive end. And now you've got the Ducks backed up the second down at 20. Oregon has always been a big screen team on long yardage situations with these quick backs. Barner's first touch, and he's not going to get anything either. Lost another yard, maybe two. Kansas State's defense right. playing they're, well. They're affecting the line of scrimmage. Again, that's what you have to do. You have to control the front with your front seven and make them go sideways. Don't give them creases and open gaps to use that speed to hurt you with. So they went from first down across midfield to third and 22 back at their own 39. You have to rush the passer under control here. Mariota already got you once with a scramble. There's Flags another move. Down again. I think might be the tight end. False start. Offense. Number 15. It's a five yard penalty. Still third down. And that's a call. Getting loud in here. Yeah. Kansas State brought half of Manhattan with them. <laughs> There's a pretty good sampling of green and gold here too, but a lot of purple. <laughs> Mariota the throw. Fires far side. Got a man complete at midfield. Back to basically the original line of scrimmage to the Anthony Thomas. But it's still fourth down. Well, unlike Bill Snyder, Chip Kelly does like to go for it on fourth down, but fourth and ten. He's going to play the percentages here and hope that his punter can pin Kansas State deep. Jermaine Thompson, he's had a touchdown on a punt return this year as well. Jackson Rice to kick. High kick. Thompson's going to have to take this one. I thought he was going to fair catch it. He didn't. He didn't get much of a return out of it. Gutsy. Punt return of three yards. Coming up, Heisman failing on a fourth and one in Ducks territory. Wilson and Hubert with Klein in the backfield. Lockett in motion on first down. And it'll be Hubert. And he found a crease. Tough run, eight yards. For the junior out of Waco. And you hear the chance of Hubert. He's not necessarily little, he's just short. Yep. Yeah, he's put together, physical runner, knows how to find the end zone, fits 15 touchdown runs this season. He's in the pistol right now behind Klein on second down and two. From the 19. He'll get it again. And a little bit short, I think. The combo in from his outside linebacker position to make the stop. The combo was banged up a little in bowl practice. Looks good out there tonight. Another guy that's in there for Oregon. They're happy to have back Wade Kayla Ikipi, number 92. Started the first nine games and was out with an injury, and he's a big presence in the middle of that Oregon defense. All of Kansas State's third downs have been third and two or short. This one's less than a yard. And it'll be the second man through, and he's got it. Hubert picked up a couple. Tyson Coleman made the stop as we check in with Holly. 
Well, Kansas State offensive coordinator Dana Dimmel told me that he felt they made a mistake against Baylor when they got down early. They abandoned their running game a little bit, threw the ball too much. He said, that was not our plan. We have to be who we are tonight. Even if we get down early, expect us to stay with our identity and run the ball. We're seeing that on this drive. Interesting substitution. The first possession or first part of this possession, three defensive linemen, now five defensive linemen in for Oregon to offset this Kansas State run game. Klein under center will give it off. Again, Huber trying to bounce it outside. Did for maybe a yard, but that's about it. Terrence Mitchell, the cornerback on that side, made the play. It looks the same alignment wise like you have three linemen and two outside linebackers or stand up ends but they're bigger bodies and, and that's what you do to offset a power run team like Kansas State is. Todd you mentioned Nick Pitts the left guard he's got to lead the game for a play because his helmet came off so Boston Stiverson comes in to take his spot on the offensive front for the Wildcats second down and nine. Three wideouts out there for Colin Klein. And he will throw. And throws it a little bit behind Tremaine Thompson. Incomplete. I talked about five defensive linemen in. Here's a little wrinkle to this. This guy standing up right here like a linebacker is a defensive lineman. He's listed as the starting nose tackle, Ricky Himuli. And he's going to rush right over the center. Just a, a little different wrinkle from Nick Aliotti to try to create some confusion for Colin Klein. Nothing like looking over there at what you think the middle linebacker, <laughs> and he's 305 pounds, and he's coming. Third down and nine. So this is their first third and long situation. Klein in trouble, and down he goes. Michael Clay with a sack, the first of the night. Clay, the leading tackler on this team. Well, the left tackle got hung up. He got hung up inside and didn't peel back for Michael Clay, and Clay had an untouched path to the quarterback. Wait at the 40, high but short. And he's going to take it in midair. <laughs> Seen a couple of gutsy punt returns tonight that haven't really netted that much. Chip Kelly had his hands on his head. He did not like that decision, but it worked out okay. Good field <laughs> position for the Ducks here at the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl on ESPN. Here, the matchup problem is the tight end, Colt Lairla. The throw is well behind the intended receiver. I'm not sure where that one was yeah. heading. Mariota on a pass intended for Braylon Addison. Think about this Kansas State defense. The two corners are good football players. Alan Chapman, number three, Nigel Malone, number 24. They play in the Big 12 Conference. They face a lot of good receivers week in and week out. They are very solid cover guys. This time, Mariota gives off to DeAnthony Thomas on the sweep, and then again the speed. To get the first down on the far side. Pick up a 14 on the ground. Nice job securing the edge this time. The Anthony Thomas picks up a nice block down the field. Keon Lowe, number seven, got a nice block. Also, Daryl Hawkins, number 16. Wide receivers blocking on the perimeter for their back. And now Kenyon Barber back in there. Play action. Mariota does take a shot deep. And some contacts, but incidental apparently incomplete, intended for Josh Huff. So they called the number that Todd called a play ago. Well, he's their guy. I think if they want to go to him, they might be better off putting him in the slot and working against one of the interior defenders because, again, these corners are pretty salty. Barner this time gets the carry. Kansas State stands him up though after a pickup of about three and it's Arthur Brown the judge the captain of the defense the middle linebacker and one of the best linebackers in college football. This defense nine senior starters out of 11 all nine of them either a junior college transfer or in the case of Arthur Brown a transfer from the University of Miami veteran experienced mature guys. Third down and seven, empty backfield. Mariota looked to the right and now takes off up the middle. And he's got another first down. 
interesting. I think that was a design quarterback run. He showed fake. He gave a little shoulder and ball fake to the right. But this is a design run and you see Kyle Long number 74 the left guard released and was a lead blocker that shows for sure that it was a design quarterback key. So on third and seven he got nine and a first down of the 28. And now it's Barn Barner on the outside. Kenyon Barner Chapman and Brown put him down. Came into the game 1624 yards sensational season including that special one against USC 321 yards rushing and five touchdowns. Those are crazy numbers. <laughs> Second and five. Mario up throwback screen to DeAnthony Thomas and Thomas follows his blockers all the way. Touchdown. Twenty three yards his second score of the night. Now this is uh, pretty evident that the Anthony Thomas likes playing in BCS bowl games <laughs> because last year in the Rose Bowl he had a coming out party and he is having one so far tonight. One on a kick return that one. Weaving his the way on the through the traffic for the touchdown. Run for a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. Timeout on the field. So they're taking another look at this one. You just you, you can't give him that much space. Beautiful job Oof. by the center getting down in front of there. Hieronis Grasso, number 55, very active and mobile center was the guy leading the play. Take a look at this, see if he was down before the ball crossed. I don't think so. That would be hard to overturn, I would think. His legs are still in the air. His elbow is going to come down, but I think by that time, the ball is crossing the plane. Sure looks like it. But we'll let Ted Jackson, our replay official, straighten it out. There's about the best, seems like the best look. About the time his wrist is hitting, it looks like he's breaking the plane with his right After hand. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. The Anthony Thomas, last year 314 all-purpose yards in the Rose Bowl, two long touchdowns of 91 and 64 yards, and he is uh, taking over this game in 2013. Extra point up and good by Maldonado. Kind of a strange score because of the two point conversion on the opening score of the ball game. For the second time, number six has a big impact and gets six. Second score for DeAnthony Thomas and the Ducks out in front 15 to nothing. Tyler Lockett awaits the kickoff. And he'll run up on this one at the nine yard line. Lock it. Got it to the outside. And across the 40. Nice run back. Well, Brad, I mentioned that DeAnthony Thomas must like playing in BCS games. Last year in the Rose Bowl against Wisconsin, 315 yards of total offense, two long touchdown runs. One of them, this one here, 91 yards. Also had one for 64 yards. We've already seen him return a kick, the opening kick for a touchdown in this ball game. He had 125 yards worth of kick returns in the game against Wisconsin last year. So obviously, number six likes the big stage. <laughs> and if you've never seen him play in person, he's faster than he is when you watch him on film or you watch him on TV. And this is the first time these two schools have ever played each other in their history. So Kansas State is getting a first hand look at the kind of speed that he has. Got a penalty marker down. Well, I think, yeah, delay well, game. game. Number seven on the offense. Just can't have it's that happen penalty. when you just had a nice Stanley. kickoff return. Yeah. Well, Kansas State, what they do a lot is they get to the line of scrimmage, they have a play called, and then they try to look to the line, to the sideline, to change the play. Nick Aliotti's a veteran defensive coordinator. He's kind of letting them get set up, and then he's switching his people and his movement as well. And that time they got caught trying to be too cute. Kansas State, one of the least penalized teams in the country. They had a few penalty problems against Baylor, too, the night they lost. 
And they're scrambling around a little bit here. On first and 15. They did get this play off. Klein scanning the field. Throws back near side. Oh, man. Almost got Lockett killed on that one. Yeah. And he was late getting the ball to Lockett because Lockett was open as a safety valve early in the play. But by the time Colin was able to pick him up, see, he gets the ball right now. He maybe squirts loose, but the ball was late getting to him. And that was a nice play by the corner. Olomu knocking it out. Ifo Ekpre Olomo. And he's an impact guy for six fumbles this year and had four interceptions. And as you saw there, he can hit you as well. Second and 15. Pressure coming off the corner, and Colin Klein will tuck this one away and get what he can, which is almost back to the original line of scrimmage. Tico Alonzo, excuse me, Todd, made the tackle. It's just interesting how Oregon is choosing to play. Now they're subbing on this third and long, but they're playing a lot with five defensive linemen, and then they take their two linebackers, Alonzo and Michael Clay, and play them very deep to allow them to read and count on those five guys to control the offensive line and free up those two linebackers to run around and make plays. Kansas State, two out of four on their third down conversions, but they were short third downs. This one's third. And long. Klein going to go deep down the sideline, and his wide receiver Harper got tangled up with Mitchell, and we've got a flag. Yeah, that's a that's a mistake by Mitchell because that ball was probably going to be overthrown, and he definitely grabbed and held Harper. Pass in the first. Defense number 27. 15 yards, automatic, first down. Ron Cherry, our referee, the officiating crew from the ACC, by the way, tonight. Harper, a former Oregon Duck. Yep. Transferred to Kansas State, wanted to play quarterback. Bill Snyder said I calmly talked him out of that. <laughs> yeah. Said he let him make the decision, but he was obviously pretty persuasive on right. where he'd have the best chance to play. And he's become a good receiver, big body. Angelo Pease coming back looking for a block from Colin Klein and got it. And Pease is all the way to the 31 before he's roughed out of bounds. A pickup of 13. It's one of those plays that if the uh, tackle was made on the Kansas State sideline, maybe it's a penalty. But because it was made on the Oregon sideline, there was no play penalty called. I think we have a lineman down also for Kansas State. Here's the hit. Eric Dargan, the safety, number four, ran him out of bounds and then finished him off well out of bounds. It's Tavon Rooks, the tackle, who's down. Junior college transfer out of Randallstown, Maryland. Well, Cody Whitehair started the game at right tackle because we talked about Nick Pitts, number 50, being back in the lineup at left guard. When Pitts was out, Whitehair was playing the left guard position, and Tavon Rooks became the starting right tackle. So you hope that Rooks is okay, but Kansas State is built right now anyway to to carry on with Whitehair at right tackle and Pitts back in the game at left guard. Kansas State is not a long ball kicking field goal team, and so as we see him get tangled up and rolled up on. Going off with a little bit of help, the big fella. Getting back to what I was talking about at the 31 yard line, Todd. They're thinking, not obviously, touchdown, touchdown all the way just to get back in the game. But right now, Anthony Cantelli has had some issues with long field goals. It's yeah. kind of a game to game thing where the coaches talk to him and say, What's your range tonight? Because yeah. uh, it's iffy at times. So. Uh, and, and you don't necessarily ordinarily beat Oregon with field goals. That's you true. need touchdowns to keep pace with them. I got a first down right now. The Wildcats at the 31 yard line. Blitz coming off the corner. And another good run inside by Pease. And he's got about 13 more. 
The Oregon guessed that this was going to be an outside option, so they loaded up out here. They were going to bring pressure, but Pease is going to cut this in smartly inside, and Oregon kind of ran themselves out of the play. They left a void because they rushed from the outside, expecting a perimeter option, and Pease got inside for a nice game. So Kansas State in the red zone for the first time tonight. And they've been pretty successful when they get there on the season. They switch Wilson now, the fullback, to the left side, and they're going to bring that option Todd talked about. The pitch to Pease puts his head down, got a foul, three to the 15. Coming into the game tonight, Colin Klein has run the ball 64 times in the red zone. I mean, he is very effective because he's big, physical, he's a patient runner, and he has good vision. All the things that you want a running back to have, he has that. And because of his big body, he's usually falling forward for extra yards, and that's why he's effective running it in the red zone. Because of taking a sack, three rushes, minus five yards for him on the ground tonight. Here at second down at seven. They'll keep bringing Mr. Pease. This time he weaves his way for about three more. DeForest Buckner made the tackle. And now here's the biggest third down of the first quarter upcoming. A first quarter that has less than a minute remaining. Really the options for Colin Klein throwing the ball here. You've got the big bodied receiver in Harper and your quick slot receiver in Lockett. Lockett is up to the top to the right of the formation. Harper down below on the left. And in that pistol set Klein comes up lets his lineman know and now his tailback know as well what's coming third and three. He will do it himself or try. He's got the first down. First and goal, Kansas State. First successful run of the night for the big guy. And see, that's why he's so effective. He's patient. He waited for his lead blocker to be Angelo Pease to get in front of him. He didn't rush it. He had good vision where a crease was, and that big body fell forward for the first down. May not see another play in corner number one. But right now, it's an eight play drive that's got the Big 12 champions. Knocking on the door to open the second quarter. First quarter belongs to Oregon. Countering again with five defensive linemen against this offense. Klein has scored 77 of their 104 offensive touchdowns the last two years. That was his wife Shaylin looking on. First and goal. Looked like maybe Oregon jumped into the neutral zone. Yeah, I think so. Ricky Haimuli, I think, got a head start, and that'll take it half the distance to the goal if indeed that's the call. Offside. Defense number 90. Half is to the goal. Still first down. So a four fourth penalty. Puts it first and goal at the three. Pease is in the backfield with Klein, but this is usually Colin time down near the goal line. He's hit in the backfield and lost loss of a couple. Deion Jordan with the first hit, and they keep Alonzo cleaned up. Well, his penetration, and again, it was Alonzo's penetration. Watch number 47 bust through there. And disrupt the timing. Jordan came from the outside. Alonzo came from the inside, and they blew up the play. Nick Alioti told us yesterday, if somebody's going to say something on this defense, it's Deion Jordan. He did it with his play on that particular snap, and it backs it up to the five, where it's second and goal. The option left. Clyde keeps it again and again goes down. A loss of one. Taylor Hart. And they're back where they originally were at the six yard line. And two bad plays in a row after a beautiful drive. Put him in great situation to get a touchdown. Now they're in a tough spot. Third down because now Oregon will be expecting play pass. And I would imagine that they will put extra coverage on Chris Harper on this play. Chris Harper's to the top of your screen.
Third down and goal, Kansas State at the Duck Six. Klein looking right, running now, heading to the corner in the pylon. Touchdown. Six yards for the score, his 23rd rushing touchdown of the year. That's great awareness by Colin Klein. Not very good discipline on the pass rush by Oregon because you got to be aware of his ability to run. Run across the goal line with the ball in his possession. Touchdown. The previous play is on the further review. Here's another look. They rush up the field, they get caught inside, and Colin Klein very smartly sees green grass to the left. Yeah, he got the ball inside the pylon, no question. Beautiful run and the toughness and strength at the end of the play to yep. get the touchdown. Got his whole body inside. That nice body lean and that 230 pounds. Now, how about him running on third down? He got the conversion to end the first quarter. Yep. And then he comes down here on a critical third down and gets the touchdown. You see the last two years, first quarterback from an automatic quarterfly school to rush for 20 touchdowns and pass for 10 touchdown. in consecutive seasons. I just had to make sure they take a second look. Touchdown's good. And now it's Cantelli in for the point after. So Kansas State right back in the football game early in the second quarter. Capping off a 58 yard drive and 10 plays. The Heisman finalist Colin Klein, six yards for the score. And his wife Shaylin in the stand saying coverage starts Monday, 8 Eastern on ESPN. And you can also watch, I watch ESPN. Short kick to the 16 to Keon Lowe. And he's cut down at the 25. And then Pooch kicked away from DeAnthony Thomas. Pretty smart decision. Arthur Brown coming into the game for Kansas State, their leading tackler. And Oregon's done a pretty good job of moving him away from the action. Mariota moves him with his eyes in formation and then is going to run away from Arthur Brown for a nice pickup and a first down. And then on another play, they move him by formation. Kenyon Barner leaves the, the backfield. Arthur Brown's affected. And they throw the touchdown to DeAnthony Thomas. And now Kansas State stops Kenyon Barner after only a yard. Meshack Williams has had a good game here in the first half. These defensive ends on both teams can yes. play. And for the most part, Kansas State has been up for the challenge of defending the Oregon run game. It's just a, a couple big plays by DeAnthony Thomas that have been the difference in the ball game. Mariota comes up, grabs his tight end. Wireland moves him to the other side on second down and nine. Barner trying to pop it outside. And they're not going to let him, and it's Meshack Williams again. Well, again, it starts inside with the defensive tackles affecting the line of scrimmage, and they push it back. And when you force quick backs to turn towards the sideline and continue to try to bounce outside, then other guys get there to make the tackles. And the, the defensive tackles and the defensive ends for Kansas State have played a heck of a ball game so far. The Anthony Thomas is in a slot to the left. You always have to worry about him, especially with the game he's had so far tonight. Third and nine. Long ball sideline. And Barner just I think didn't he lost see it. it. Yeah, he I lost think it he in lost the lights sight of the ball. You yeah. called it, and he was open, and it would have possibly been a touchdown. Watch his reaction or lack thereof. <laughs> it went right where his hands could have been oh almost. Goodness. Wow. He looked up and never found the ball. <laughs> and he had Jarrell Childs beat, no question. Again, the roof is closed tonight. Maybe if he could have seen the stars, he would have seen the ball. Jackson Rice to kick at any rate. Big stop for Kansas State. Nice punt. Jermaine Thompson. Takes it and immediately gets wrapped up by Ekre Olubu. At his own 33-yard line. Well, last time they had the ball, they had it for 10 plays, five and a half minutes. 
Here it's play action. And it's going to be Collin throwing over John Hubert's head as we check in with Holly. Kansas State doesn't release injury information, but from what I have observed, right tackle Tavon Rooks is unlikely to return. They've examined his right leg and knee, and after they told him the diagnosis, he's been sitting on the bench. Teammates have been coming over, kind of passing condolences, patting him on the head. His return does not appear to be imminent. But Cody Whitehair, his replacement, redshirt freshman, but he has some starts in this position this year and has played extensively at right tackle. Cody in there next to Tannehill, the tight end on the right side on second down at 10. Klein throws crossing route. Tyler Lockett. Lockett broke a tackle. Got a first down. He's shifty. Yep. You know, Colin Klein, he still doesn't have the, the picture perfect passing delivery, maybe that you'd want at the next level, but he's much improved in his accuracy, and that's a result of better footwork. He worked with Terry Shea this offseason with a longtime NFL quarterback coach and they really concentrated on footwork and balance in the pocket and that's why his passing percentage is so much better this year than a year ago. Sixty six percent in fact. Mariota the redshirt freshman on the other side seventy percent completions on the year first down. Klein maybe will throw again. Not now. It's in his left hand, and he's going for what he can on the sideline, and he's run out of bounds on the Kansas State sideline, and still no <laughs> flag, and the fans let the officials know that they're not crazy about that. What a beautiful block by Hubert. He, Colin Klein, when he made the decision to go, Hubert picks up the block, and I think for the second time, it's not the initial contact, it's taking him down at the end of the play. I think you saw Coach Snyder yeah. pointing to the head linesman. Hey, he was four yards out of bounds right. when they took him to the ground. Well, he knows his quarterback takes enough legal hits during the course <laughs> of the game. He doesn't need to take an extra one on the sideline. Second down at four. Play action. He throws one out and a one handed catch by Tannehill. The tight end good for the first down. And don't you feel the Kansas State offense settling into the game a little bit better? Yep. They're getting a little bit more confidence, a little bit more productivity. Again, they score almost as efficiently this season as Oregon. It just takes them a little bit longer to do it. And so consequently, they don't score as many points per game. But from an efficiency standpoint, percentage of touchdowns of offensive drives, almost identical. They've got another first down at the 42. In a pistol, John Hubert behind Colin Klein. And now again, they shift and bring Wilson, the fullback, into play in the backfield. Again, this is Himuli, who's a nose tackle, lined up as a linebacker. And Wildcats going to take a timeout. They were running out of time again. A little over 10 to play, first half. 15 minutes remaining in the first half. Five defensive linemen. You got the extra guy standing up like a linebacker. Quick throw out to Harper. And his power gets him four or five yards after the catch. Terrence Mitchell held out on that corner to make the stop. A good job recognizing the defense, taking what the defense gives you. They're going to give you a little single coverage. That five yard completion is better than banging your head on a running play, <laughs> trying to go inside against five defensive linemen. The second down at five. Klein, plenty of time, throws a crossing route to Harper again. Harper puts his head down, and did he get it? I think he did. Looked like he might have. And with that spot, he will. And even though Dana Dimmel said something to Holly earlier about they want to stick to their basics of running the football, right now Oregon is inviting them to throw because of their formation, because of the extra defensive linemen. They're giving them opportunities to throw quickly for good yardage. First down at the Oregon 32. Trying to even this game up here in the second quarter. Slip and Hubert only got about a yard. We talked about Chris Harper being a former Oregon Duck player. In 2008 he was the first player in eight years in Oregon program history to run, catch and pass for a touchdown in the same season. 
And then he converted after you see that throw probably right there <laughs> from quarterback to wide receiver. And against UCLA, full time duty at wideout at that point before transferring to Kansas State. He's become a very good player. Big body, kind of a hard guy to bring down. Second down and nine. Hard guy to bring down and a hard guy to get around on quick throws. Just got the playoff. Klein, plenty of time. Pump fakes, comes back to the other side, complete to Hubert, and he's going to be three yards shy of the first down. <laughs> Look at Chip Kelly just walking down the sideline, and, and you can just tell, you know, this tempo that Kansas State is starting to, to develop and starting to establish. This is not what he likes. He likes to have the ball and be able to go fast. Colin Klein's hit his last five passes. If he hits another one here and they can extend the drive, that's more time on the sideline for the Duck offense. Another third down and three. Duck show blitz. They slip trying to do it, and the throws complete to Harper. Harper. And again, just like we talked about, hard to bring down. First and goal, Wildcats pick up of 21. The quick throw against the blitz, the big body just shield the defender. Perfect timing by Colin Klein and another first down. Good call, good execution, good job picking up the blitz by a Kansas State offensive line. And those two guys can't do any damage sitting on the sideline without their helmets. First and goal. Nemechek, the extra tight end in there, is an extra blocker. Here comes Huberts. Just a yard, though. Amuli in on the stop. Second down and goal. Again, very methodical for Kansas State. I think they mind if it comes on second down or third down because they want to eat as much clock as they can as well here in the second quarter. Ledge, their touchdown drive was 10 plays. This is an 11th play coming up right here. Now they go to three wideouts. Second and goal at the three. And Colin Klein will try to do it himself. Barely got a yard. Whoop. Look out, almost a forearm thrown by Alonzo at the end of that play. Well, they just didn't get enough push on the left side. And again, that was Nick Pitts, who was in there, number 50, who got driven back and kind of disrupted the, the flow and the timing of the play. And that's, that could have been a helmet to helmet, yeah. not just a forearm. Yeah, well, here comes the forearm. Well, I didn't that, see the helmet to helmet the first time. That's two hits that both could have been called. On Kiko Alonso. Remington is the player that was down and coming off. So now it's third and goal. And remember, Colin Klein has rushed for a first down twice on third down tonight. Harper looks like single coverage up top. That might be what Colin Klein's checking to right now. That's a short side of the field from that spot. Option pitch to Hubert going nowhere. They lost yardage. Tony Washington got first penetration and Michael Clay on the stop a loss of four. Again when you defend the option you have to have discipline. Somebody has to account for the quarterback in that case. That was Washington and then somebody has to account for the pitch man and that was Michael Clay perfectly defended to the short side of the field by Oregon. There was a little bit of thoughts about going for it before the field goal unit came out. Can't tell 18 out of 21 of the year. This should be a chip shot from the left hash. A 25 yard field goal attempt. Can't tell he Tucks it inside the left upright with 521 remaining in the half. One possession game now. The lead down to 15 to 10. Cantelli, short kick taken at the nine by Keenan Lowe. And Lowe got outside as well. 
Out across the 40. Another big kick return for the Ducks. Well, so far tonight, Kansas State's defense has done what you have to do against Oregon's run offense. That's disrupt the line of scrimmage, change the line of scrimmage, and tackle the ball carriers before they get a chance to get upfield with their speed. And they've done that. So far, Oregon has only run 16 plays in the first half. This is a team coming in averaging over 80 a game. But I did say so far. There's right. still five minutes left. You in got the first that. Half. You got that shot from the Direct TV Ultimate Picture Cam on that last play. But Todd's talking about total plays, and we talk about time of possessions. Meshack Williams, another stop there. Right now, Kansas State, 138 total yards. There's the 35 to 16 in plays. 18 minutes to 6:47 in time of possession. So right now, time of possession does mean something to Kansas State anyway. Mariota. Running out of time and has to flip this one to the sideline. I don't think anybody watching this game tonight anticipated the Kansas State defense doing this to Chip Kelly and the Oregon offense. And it starts up front, controlling the line of scrimmage, stopping the run, and that disrupts everything that Oregon likes to do. Mariota is two out of seven throwing the football, and he might be ready to throw here again on third and seven. He will throw quickly, but again, great hit put on from the secondary. Justin Tuggle actually from the linebacker position on Josh Huff. Not a bad hit for a guy that was a quarterback up until about a year ago. Yeah, well, his daddy was a pretty good linebacker. <laughs> he right. must have taught him a thing or two. Second straight, three and out. Something that it's very hard to do against Oregon. So Jackson Rice to punts. Wayne Thompson has made some gutsy punt returns tonight, choosing not to fair catch the football. And this is a fake, and it's an option. And the pitch to the punter, and he's not going to get there. Kansas State comes up with a big play on special teams. When you defend the option, you got to account for the quarterback, and you got to account for the pitch man. Well, this wasn't your normal option. But Kansas State defended it perfectly. Watch him defend Clay. He's the quarterback. Now watch him defend the punter, the pitch man. Well short, perfect discipline defense by the Kansas State special team. One of the best special team units in the country in almost all phases, and proving it right there again. And Ty Zimmerman says, no, sir, not this time. First down. This could be a big emotional boost again for Kansas State. They've scored 10 unanswered points and they've got it at midfield. Colin Klein going to throw to Good his decision. safety valve out of the backfield. Pease and he's got another first down. Great decision because they went for a deep play off of play action after the huge play by the special teams, but Harper was not open. So Colin Klein, a good decision, dump it off, pick up a first down, keep your momentum going. Brad, I wonder if that going for the fake punt there is a little sign that Chip Kelly said, hey, wait a minute, we're getting a little desperate yeah, here. Yeah, we I think need you're the right. football. I think you're definitely correct on that one. First down at the 38. Two tight ends and a fullback in there. And on the option, it's Pease, and he wants to throw. Hit, and now does go deep. Man out there. Oh, at the goal line broken up. Brian Jackson got there in time. Because Pease had to double clutch that and reset, that enabled Brian Jackson to come from beaten to make the play. If Pease is able to throw this on time initially, this is probably a touchdown because Harper ran by his man, but Jackson came from the inside and knocked the ball away. I got to say, though, Pease, he spun that baby yes, pretty did. well, didn't he? He sure did. So Kansas State pulling out a couple of stops. Second and ten. Hubert back in with Colin Klein in the K-State backfield. Klein wanted to throw. Now scrambles around and throws this one out of bounds. Save it for another play. Taylor Hart was giving chase. I'll tell you what, this Oregon defense has responded well also. You know, even though Kansas State's offense is starting to get their footing a little bit, 
when they've gotten close, the Oregon defense and Nick Aliotti's group has really tightened it up. Colin Klein had hit his last seven passes before that one. And now it's third and ten. They've done well on third down so far in this half. Klein crossing route again to Harper. Stiff arm and a first down after it. See, that's the strength of Harper. You know, a smaller receiver might get tackled there short of the first down, but because of the size and strength of Harper, he's able to stiff arm Terrence Mitchell and pick up the first down. 234 pounder and watch this stiff arm coming up and says nope not on this play. And a first down at the 27. He got 11 on third and 10. Hubert. Off the left side slipped a little bit but Derek Malone made sure he wasn't going too far. Well what Kansas State is hoping for right now. Is a, is a touchdown that would put them in front right before half and they will get the ball to start the third quarter. You talk about wanting to seize and capture momentum. That's what uh, Kansas State's trying to do right now. There's your guy. Yeah. Eric. Modern family. <laughs> Eric Stone Street had Eric's. a chance to meet him before the oh, game. Man. What a pleasant guy. He and Ty Burrell. They were both uh, everything we'd hoped for yeah. having met him and uh, enjoyed talking to him before the game. Alec Klein, zone read. That one didn't look right from no. the get go. There wasn't a mesh there with his tailback and uh, not much of a fake. There's Ty Burrell. He said, I'm the only guy in my family, and my entire family went to Oregon, but I'm the only guy that went twice and still didn't graduate. <laughs> That's what he told me before the game. Oh, man. The spots those guys put together for us. Uh, they shot promos for us this year, and they are hilarious. Here we are. Turned out just the way we wanted. K-State and Oregon playing for the national championship. No, you're not. Shut, Shut up. up. You know what? There's no shame for us. We lost to teams quarterbacked by RG3 and Andrew Luck. Last year. Shut, Shut up. up. Shut up. <laughs> oh, man. Delightful guys to yeah. be around. We thank them for their uh, help with those hilarious spots we've had going on this week. Third down six. Well, last time it was a crossing route to Harper. He's an outside receiver this time. Tannehill the tight end is in the slot of the three to the top and here's the slant the other way and it is Harper but uh, forward progress. Let's see where they're going to spot it. Pickup of about five. Well, I think Bill's going to let this clock go as far down as he can before he makes a decision to kick or go for it here. Got two timeouts left. Cantelli's got the chin strap buckled. But right now the offense comes up to the line on fourth and one. They were stopped once in the first quarter. Maybe just trying to draw them off sides this time. But Klein telling Pease, calm down, we got this. Oops, and now there's motion on the left side, and it's a false start, and Kansas State tricked themselves. False start, 78, offense. It's a five-yard penalty, still fourth down. And now he says, let's go kick it. That's hard for those big guys. Be in that stance and listen to that hard count. But clearly Colin Klein was just trying to draw the penalty and then they were going to call timeout right before the clock went out. So Cantelli hit a 24 a 25 yarder earlier and he's going to try from 40 42 is his season long this year. Trying to make it a two point game. Anthony Cantelli kick on the way and it's wide left. And there's what we talked about. They've had some problems with longer kicks this year, and they miss an opportunity to make it a two point game. 
The Oregon defense in the first half this season, they gave up 24 points to USC, but against everybody else, they've averaged only seven and a half points per game in the first half. Ten on the board so far for Kansas State, but it could have been more. Pretty good defense there after the sudden change, after the, the missed attempt at the fake field goal or the fake punt. Nice that, job. That false start didn't help. No. That was a five yard longer yep. kick. Yep. A minute to go. It's about how long it takes Oregon to score usually. Here's the tight end, and he's got it out across the 45 yard line before a swarm of purple hits him. A little surprised they haven't tried to go to him more. He's a real mismatch. A big physical tight end, 6'5, 250, and can really run. First first down for Oregon since there was 346 remaining in the first quarter. That's how long Kansas State's kept it out of their hands. But here's Barner now down to the 41. The last time they had the ball, they had five minutes and they went three and out. Now they have 50 seconds and they got something going. First down at the 41 yard line. Pump fake. Mariota going the other way now. Still scanning the field. And he'll just dump it to the Kansas State sideline. 31 seconds remaining in a half. Oregon two timeouts remaining. You know, Holly in her report before the game talked about the return of Ty Zimmerman, who we did not see in the game against Baylor or Texas. And you can tell what a difference he makes. His presence, his leadership, his ability to get everybody lined up in this defense, along with Arthur Brown at the middle linebacker position. And of course, he made the play on the fake punt as well with a tackle. Down the middle. And again. Lyle of the tight end. 17 more yards. Oregon still has two timeouts. Clock stops while they move the chains. They get the snap in a hurry. Mariota scanning the field. Going to go back to the sideline. Got Barner on the run, and he'll score. Touchdown, Oregon. Just like that. So that's a 24th touchdown in less than a minute this year. Talk about regaining momentum before halftime. Five plays, 77 yards in 46 seconds. Talked all night so far about the poise of Marcus Mariota. He's had to leave the pocket two or three times and just throw the ball away because of coverage. This time he leaves, but he finds Barner out open, and he's able to get it in the football and a touchdown, a dagger-type touchdown right before the half. Todd, that's a 10-point swing in yep. 46 seconds. Missed field goal, touchdown. Mm. Major difference for the duck and the push-ups he has to do. And now the Oregon faithful really making some noise. They hadn't had much to cheer about since the Anthony Thomas two quick touchdowns in the first quarter. And now Kenyon Barner's got his offense's attention on that sideline. And you got to think that Maldonado will try to line drive this and keep it away from Tyler Lockett. Well, how about? Mariota on that drive also. Yeah. I think he completed more on that drive than he had in the whole first half yeah. before that, or just about. He got his tight end, Lyerla, evolved, and then the, the payoff play with Kenyon Barner. Now Maldonado will re tee it. And again, you don't want to put this in the hands of Tyler Lockett if you can help him. There's the line drive taken by one of the up men, but Tannehill pitches it back to Thompson. And Tremaine Thompson, pretty good looking play. Seven seconds remaining. College football continues Saturday on ESPN. It'll be Pitt and Ole Miss, 1 o'clock in the BBBA Compass Bowl. Saturday 
1 o'clock Eastern on ESPN and also live on the Watch ESPN app. So we've got probably one play remaining in the first half. Disappointing final minute yeah. for Kansas State. Well, I don't know, maybe they'll take a shot. They've got three wideouts down here to the bottom of the screen. Colin Klein rolls that way. He's going to throw it as far as he can here in a second. There it goes. And on the other end, it is intercepted at the 11 yard line by Eric Dargan. So, Kansas State took a shot to start the third quarter and uh, have a chance to fight right back into it. Rob Beard to kick, Tyler Lockett and Tremaine Thompson, both dangerous return men, wait on the other end. And running up on it at the nine is Lockett. Tyler Lockett got to the outside. Nice little shake at the 35 and out of bounds at the 36 as we check in with Holly Rowe. Well, I asked Kansas State coach Bill Snyder what went wrong when Oregon went to that fast tempo to end the half. And he said, well, for one thing, we gave up the exact same play twice, a little tight end delay right down the middle. We let him run free. And then when they started to scramble, we got out of coverage. He said, we've got to be more disciplined even when they pick up the tempo. And then I asked him about those five defensive linemen in the box, how that's affecting their run game. He said, it's not something we weren't expecting. They've done it before. We've got to do a better job staying on blocks and not dance in the backfield. Thanks, Holly. You see what Kansas State has done to open drives of the third quarter. And they come up ready to throw. Klein, near side, wide open is Tremaine Thompson. And out of bounds with a first down. This is one of the best second half teams yep. in the country, Kansas State. So if you're a Wildcat fan, you can hang your hat on that. Yeah, that is when they have been at their best. They rank second behind Louisiana Tech this season, averaging 23.4 points per game in the second half. That's that's kind of when they've been at their best. Of course, Oregon has been at their best in the first half, but they haven't had to play their starters in as many fourth quarters as Kansas State has. And a lot of those games were blowouts by halftime. But good field position here after that first down toss at the 48-yard line. Empty backfield for Colin Klein. Well, this this should have been a pass. I, I don't know why you have to call timeout there. I mean that that me for Kansas State. Come out on the field. K State. This is a 30 second timeout. This is the first charge timeout of the second half. K State went with an empty backfield. Oregon loaded up to stop the run. The numbers say you got to throw the football. You got single coverage all across the field. They should have been able to check to a throw there without having to use a timeout. Reminder for you Saturday, champion will be crowned as North Dakota State and Sam Houston State decide who's the best team in the nation in Division I. Football championship presented by Enterprise Rent a Car Saturday, 1 o'clock on ESPN 2 and also live on Watch ESPN. So a wasted timeout after a first down throw. And they set back up first and 10 at the 48 yard line. Different formation now with Colin Klein under center and both the fullback and John Hubert in the backfield. Lock it in motion to the right side. Just a little toss to Hubert, and he's losing about three on this deal. Now this is Colin Klein's fault because typically on this play, when they pitch, he's going to peel back and be responsible for the end man on the line. Colin Klein wasn't quick enough getting his head around, and he didn't cut off the backside pursuit. That was Lacumbo who made the play from behind. So back to back. You would have to say mistakes by the senior quarterback. First some indecision and then a missed assignment. And let's see if he can make up for it now. Second down at 13. Again play clock is winding down. Klein wants to take off. And now he's going to throw across his body. Incomplete intended for Harper. And Ekre. Olamu over there to make the play. Now this is not what Bill Snyder wanted to see his offense produce coming out of the locker room. They got a good kickoff return. They had a, an initial first down and now a couple plays that have uh, not looked too good and a wasted timeout 
and now third down and 12 in front of them. And they've got to get all the way to the 42 yard line for a first down. This is their longest third down attempt so far tonight. And again, the cat and mouse game being played, and they almost ran out of time on that one, too. Klein fires far side. Kind of a dangerous throw because Ekpreolo was closing quickly on Tremaine Thompson over on that far sideline. It's just not a good possession. You know, that, that one, you called it. Play clock almost ran out on them. They tried to snap the ball quick to beat the clock. And uh, just an ineffective third down play. So a waste of their first possession of the third quarter. And Ryan Dorr will have to punt. High kick, but short. Braylon Addison's got a call for a fair catch in some traffic and makes a nice catch at the 23 yard line. Ducks in front. Kent State is the leader in the nation in turnover margin at plus 21. And a minus one tonight on that interception of the final play of the first half thrown by Klein. Loss of a yard. John Sua made the tackle. Sua and Latui, the two inside defensive linemen, have played well tonight. They've done what you need those inside guys to do create penetration and stop the inside zone run of Oregon. Kenyon Barner hasn't done much as a runner tonight but as a receiver he has Mariana goes downfield. Wow what a shot. Jared Milo says hello. And a good clean hit. He didn't lead with his head. He came in with the shoulder separated receiver from football. And that's just good hard nosed football. Whoa. And Daryl Hawkins felt the impact on that one. And it brings up third down and low. I would say if you're Kansas State, you better be aware of Lyerla, the tight end. Hurts you right before the end of the first half. Mariota on third and 11. Blitz coming from the secondary. Has to reload and now trying to run for it. And he got there. And then some. Nifty run by the Ducks quarterback. First down. 15 yards on third and 11, Ledge. Got up hobbling a little bit at the end of this play. But boy, what a great decision to break a couple tackles here and stay in bounds. Instead of running out of bounds, getting that extra yardage for the first down. Now they go to Kenyon Barner and he weaves inside to the 39. Again a guy that had a tremendous regular season over 1600 yards 21 rushing touchdowns tonight's been held in check by that front ball of Kansas State. Here's the throw out to the mismatch problem. Lila again first down. Picked up 12 more. This guy had eight touchdown catches on the year from that tight end spot. So they're not all about just flash and dash with guys in the slot. And now Barner runs the other way and he's into the secondary to the 30 yard line. He just popped out the other side. See Chip said he needed to call a faster game. They're at a much faster tempo to start the third quarter and that play Kansas State did not get lined up in their run defense. The quick snap caught him off guard. And they got a big run for Barner. 19 yards for Kenyon Barner. Now they fake it to him and they throw complete. Josh Huff. And Huff's got it to the 15 yard line. This is what Baylor did to Kansas State in Waco, the game we did. They played at a very fast tempo. Oregon, play for play, is even a little bit faster than Baylor. Mariota to the end zone. Overshot a wide open Josh Huff. <laughs> Well, he knew it too. Yeah. You know, I think he felt like, you know what, I, I'm holding this ball too long. I better get rid of it. And right as he released, he said, oh, <laughs> man, he was open. And he still had some time yep. left. So that at least gives Kansas State a chance to catch its defensive breath for a moment. Well, who can establish tempo? For 29 minutes, Kansas State did. The last minute of the first half, Oregon did. And right now they're controlling the tempo. Second down and 10. Mariota's in trouble. And he got away and throws on the run, but it's too high for DeAnthony Thomas. 
Mariota again showing his athleticism in the backfield. Violet Tui was giving chase back there, and it's third down and ten. I thought it was interesting when Chip described Mariota to us. He said, you know, he's the ideal fit for our offense. He's a quarterback who can run. Not a guy who can run who can also throw a little right. bit. Not a running back who can throw. He's a quarterback who can run. Third down and ten. Play action. He's in trouble again. And he can run. Coming back the other way. And incomplete. Nice job by the defense and Nigel Malone to break up that play on the sideline. Yeah, the receiver, Dungy, I think, was just trying to keep his feet in bounds, and he was concerned with the sideline and didn't tuck the ball away, and Malone made a nice play to knock it out. So, a uh, stop for the Kansas State defense, and Maldonado will come in for the field goal attempts. It'll be about a 32-yard field goal attempt. Trying to add to the lead. Kick on the way, and it's perfect. Maldonado tacks on three more, but still, Kansas State with a stop assures that this is a two possession game right now with 11 minutes remaining, third quarter. Get that three. Ramey Thompson, Tyler Lockett, both who averaged over 33 yards a kickoff return back deep. And it's Lockett from the one. And Lockett behind Jermaine Thompson's blocking across the 35 and out to the 41 yard line. They keep giving Kansas State good field position. Now they got to do something with it. Well, coming up on Monday night, number one against number two. Fighting Irish looking for their first national championship since 88. The Crimson Tide looking for their third in the last four years. Coverage of the Discover BCS National Championship. Starts Monday night at 8 on ESPN. I'll be down there, and that will be uh, that game will be decided in the trenches. There's no question about it. Good news for Alabama. Barrett Jones, their center, says he will play, has not practiced very much, but says he'll be good to go. Colin Klein on first down, down the middle, and in and out of the hands of Tannehill. He should have had that one. Alabama and Notre Dame, those two defenses, how about the way they played this year? One doesn't give up yards, one doesn't give up points. They don't give up much to anybody, no. actually. You know, a lot of talent on the field. And it's funny because a lot of people thought, myself included, there'd be a little bit of a drop off for Alabama's defense after losing so many guys off the team last year to the NFL, but uh, played at a very high level. Colin Klein has only hit one of his last five passes. Now that last one, Tannehill should have caught. And he's hit as he throws, incomplete. He took a pretty good shot from Eric Armstead just as he was trying to deliver that football. Well, Oregon is is baiting and inviting Kansas State into the game that they want, and that is forcing Colin Klein to throw more than than they can run the football. And that time, the guard Pitts just got shoved right back into the face of Colin Klein. This is not their comfort zone nope. to drop back and throw on three downs in a possession. But that, the formations and the personnel of Oregon are forcing them to do it. That's what they had to do against Baylor in their only loss of the season. Klein hit as he throws again. That one almost made it to Harper, the receiver. And this time, Tony Washington made Colin Klein hit the deck. See, this is a fast Oregon defense. They're not necessarily big up front, but they're fast and they can rush the passer. And on third and ten, they're not worried about run. And they're not worried about quarterback scramble. All they're worried about is hitting the quarterback. And that time, Washington did it. And much like Kansas State, they were plus 19 in turnover margin coming in. They have one interception tonight. And then two big hits on the quarterback on that series. And flag on the fair catch. As Jonathan Truman didn't give the return man enough room to make the grab. Well, I think Truman got blocked into it, but he also tripped up the return man. So even though it was a clean catch, it's still a penalty on Kansas State. Here's a call. The kick catch interference. Kicking team number 21. 15 yards. First down. Boy, you don't want to give him. Free yards, especially 
when they can score so quickly. Unbelievable. Here's Mariota on the run. Great wheels and great speed and all the way down to the 29 yard line. A 32 yard run by the Oregon quarterback and here they are as fast as they can get everybody to the line ready to run another play. Nice read little zone read by Mariota. Now they whistle that play dead might have had a false start. False start offense number 89 it's a five yard penalty still first down. You know normally the trickle down of what's popular comes from the NFL to college but the reason that you're seeing more NFL teams go up tempo is because of the duress and the stress it puts on a defense play after play after play and as good as Kansas State has played this tempo is starting to get to them a little bit. And of course the zone read is RG3 doing it in Washington yep. Cam Newton doing it in Carolina Russell Wilson doing it in Seattle. That's got yep. a little bit of a change too especially with all those young quarterbacks. You got to be a little bit more careful how much you run your quarterback in the NFL but the, the addition of it and the addition of some no huddle tempo has really caught on. And here's Barner and he broke free. I don't think his knee ever touched and he's inside the 15 great balance by Kenyon Barner. I think Kansas State thought they had him down. Sometimes big physical well that looked just like the Michael Dyer run when Auburn beat. Oregon for the national championship a couple years ago when everybody stopped except yep. Dyer. We ended up being the MVP of that game. You know, sometimes big physical teams wear you down by just punishing you and hitting you and hitting you. I think Oregon wears people down because they just keep going fast. They keep going fast. And your tongue's hanging out. That's right. Your tongue's hanging out, and all it takes is one missed gap, one missed assignment, one missed tackle, and it's six points for the Ducks. Bonner flares out of the backfield. The throw is a wide receiver screen and the Anthony Thomas paid the price for that one. Ooh. Violet two let him have it. And it's third down. See, these two backs Barner and Thomas are not guys who are going to break a lot of tackles but they do break ankles because I mean, <laughs> they, they, they can make people miss now in space. If you catch up to them. Yeah you got to catch them first. Third and three. Mariota gives it off to Barner and he's got it first and goal. Needed to get to the four or just inside and he got down to the three. Just not seeing the same control of the line of scrimmage by Kansas State as we saw in the first half. That's their bread and butter play the inside zone run. And that was a clean look for Kenyon Barner to pick up the first down. He actually got it to the two where it's first and goal. High snap. Mariota handles it and he's going to cruise to the corner. Touchdown, Oregon. Mariota with his fifth rushing touchdown of the year. And now, unless Kansas State's got an answer pretty soon, this one could get out of hand. Again another touchdown drive that took only 226. And that one's blocked by Boyd flips it around trying to get it in someone's hands to take it the other way. And so no further damage on the blocked extra point but still 31 to 10. Well, Marcus Mariota, we told you had great wheels, had an 86 yard run earlier this year. This one was good for over 30. And then it got him down close. He handled a high snap, got to the corner. Chip Kelly's offense on their kick returns all night as they have all year. But after those kickoff returns, it's Kansas State's offense that hasn't been able to do too much with it. This one takes a hop for Thompson at the 11. Jermaine Thompson and again he got the corner and got out over the 35 yard line before he's blasted out of bounds. Let's check in with Holly. 
Well, during that last drive, you were talking about how different things can translate to the NFL, and I wanted to confirm for you, I did speak with Oregon's athletic director, Rob Mullins. He has had more than one NFL team contact him and ask for permission to speak to their coach, Chip Kelly. He said he did grant that permission, but he asked the NFL teams to please honor their kids, let them finish out this season. They deserve to have everyone's full attention for this game. He said the NFL teams have been great, and as reported, some of those interviews are possibly set up for tomorrow. Holly, thanks for the 38 yard line. First down, Kansas State. They need some offense pretty soon here. This is Pease. He's done a nice job running the ball, but only got about three. And, you know, Todd, we talked about Chip Kelly and what might happen. There's their offensive coordinator and quarterback coach, and his name has come up if Chip Kelly were to go yeah. somewhere, but uh, that's a ways down the line. But I asked you a couple hours ago. Whether you thought it would have any effect on the kids, and I guess it hasn't. No, I don't think so. And again, even before Chip became the head coach, when Mike Bellotti was the head coach, that idea of win the day, focus on the task at hand, has been something that Oregon has really adhered to. And uh, I think it's showing tonight. He's trying to go wide. Defense not going to let him. Kiko Alonso again, and another loss. I, we can't say enough about this Oregon defense tonight. You know, in the first half when their offense was struggling, a couple uncharacteristic three and outs, the defense held strong, particularly in the red zone in that first half. And uh, right now they've got the game in the position that they want. Kansas State only 11 yards so far in the second half. And here they are at third and long again. And now they're down to 50% on those third down conversions because some of the earlier ones were short yardage. Colin Klein throws short, lock it in and out of his hands, and it was Alonzo again, the middle linebacker. The captain of the defense. Well, these two inside linebackers, Alonzo and Clay, are very active. Alonzo a little bigger, fast, physical, has a nose for the football, as you see right there. Gets that helmet right on the football and pops it out of Lockett's arms. So Dorr has to kick again with six and a half to go in the third quarter. Way up in the air. Addison fair catch misjudged a little bit and then made a nice diving catch. College football coming up on ESPN on Sunday nights nine o'clock Eastern golden flashes in the Red Wolves in the GoDaddy.com Bowl. Kent State, Arkansas State, Sunday at 9 on ESPN and also live on the Watch ESPN app. So a lot of bowl games left yeah. and one BCS game remaining when we're done tonight, and that's for the national championship in South Florida on Monday. It's a couple teams that lost their head coaches because they did so well yeah, this year. Darrell right. Hazel leaving Kent State to go to Purdue. Gus, Gus Malzahn on. back to Auburn as the head coach. Kenyon Barber readjusts his route. And only got a yard. Meshack Williams, well, he's had a big night. Senior out of Sylvester, Georgia. Uh, he'll play at the next level without a doubt. All Big 12 performer. Take a look. The yardage now starting to pile up for Oregon. They didn't have the ball enough in the first half. And now they've got a 32 to 10 lead. Mariota down the middle. And completes the Anthony Thomas again. 16 more yards. The Oregon's pass game is all predicated on their ability to run. And a couple good runs by Mariota, a couple runs by Barner have opened up some of the play action things down the middle. It, it started right at the end of the first half with the tight end, and now they've got more going on here in the third quarter. Here's Barner. Seven more for Kenyon Barner before Kansas State's defense can track him down. You, know, you like the poise and the and the leadership of Barner because he didn't have much room to run in that first half. They had him pretty well bottled up. Things are starting to open up a little bit for him here in the third quarter. Got seven more on that carry. Second down and three play action. Mariota is going to take a shot. And he's got his man, but he dropped it. But there is a flag. In fact, there's three of them out there. Josh Huff, had he been able to hold on, would have had a touchdown. And Randall Evans was the guy covering. 
Reach out in touch. Pass to the first. Grabbed him. <laughs> Defense. Number 15. It's a 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Josh Huff is their home run guy. The big play guy, and he ran right by Evans, and Evans grabbed him, in, grabbed him instinctively to prevent a touchdown. And he almost caught it anyway. Yep. So better than another score anyway, but the walk off. Once they move the sticks to the 42 yard line. Just under five minutes remaining in the third quarter. Mariota on a quarterback draw. And again. Kansas State, even when they get to him, they've been unable to force a turnover. They could use a fumble or an interception right now, and instead they're on their heels again. Mariota finally throws on the sideline. Would have been a tough throw to try to tuck it in there to Josh Huff. Alan Chapman was covering for Kansas State. So here's a third down stop that Kansas State really. Needs at the four and a half minute mark. Well, my guess would be Chip Kelly's looking at this as two down territory. I mean, he's not going to try a field goal from this distance. And at this point, with this lead, I don't think he'll punt. He'll go for it here, regardless of what happens on third. Barner empties the backfield. Mariota throws short of the first down, I think, to Rashawn Vaughn. Yeah, about a yard shy. But as Todd said, here's fourth and one now at the 33 yard line. Still getting the uh, ball spotted here. And Ron Cherry, I don't know if they're going to bring the sticks out or what they're stopping play for. I think they are, and this probably helps Kansas State. It slows Oregon down, slows their tempo down, and gives those big inside guys a chance to catch their breath because uh, they desperately need a stop here if it is short. It's short by almost a yard. <laughs> Oregon fans booing the measurement because they couldn't keep that pace up as Todd said gives K-State a little breather here with a fourth and one upcoming. Typically in short yardage they like to run to their left side behind their left guard Kyle Long left tackle Tyler Johnstone. Big physical athletic guys of course Kyle Long the younger son of Howie Long. Brother, Hall of Famer. Yep, brother, a great defensive lineman in the NFL now. Well, down and one. Kansas State brings an extra body up to the line and now backs it away. Mariota set back in the shotgun. And he gives it off to Barner and he spins his way for a couple and a first down. See, when you run inside zone, and that's again, that's the bread and butter play for Oregon. You give that back vision and he can cut that back anywhere in between the tackles. It's designed to go wherever there's a crease but it's blocked play side to go behind the left guard and Barner has that ability to bend it back if he sees an opening. And when he hits those creases there aren't too many guys that can catch him. Here he goes the other way and this time Kansas State nice job by Arthur Brown. The middle linebacker lost on the play. Arthur Brown, whose brother Bryce we saw as a freshman at Tennessee before he transferred to K-State and now with the Philadelphia Eagles. So two good football players in that family. Second and 13. Bonner met in the hole after a short game. Brown is there, and so is Meshack Williams. And he'll bring up another third and long. 
Alan Klein wanting to get back out there with the offense. Not much he can do about it right now as Oregon's holding out of the football. Four wide receivers here for Marcus Mariota. The tackle is really set back deep on the right side of the line. Looked like an illegal formation almost. Pass is complete down inside the 25 to Josh Huff. Nice tackle by Alan Chapman in space against a fast receiver. Keep everything in front, bring him up short, and make him go for it on fourth down. Well, they got the last fourth. This one's longer. Long four to go. Now you got to pay attention to the two inside receivers here. You're going to have DeAnthony Thomas, who's right over here on the slot, and you got the tight end Lyra right there. Fourth down at four. Mariota loads and now Meshack Williams has got him and there's a stop. The Wildcats desperately needed. First sack of the night. Good coverage downfield created this opportunity for Meshack Williams. You see the play action. Mariota has nowhere to go with the football and this time he's not able to get out of the pocket. Everett Benyard the third was the tackle got beat by Meshack. We've seen Mariota be able to get outside quite a bit today that time Meshack said not. -uh. So Colin Klein on the offense with an opportunity here from the 28 yard line. Pump fakes wanted to go long now he does go that way over to Harper and ball was the ball out at the end of the play. Guess not ruled down after a pickup of six or seven. Haven't been able to get anything downfield with a passing game and that time of possession was all big yep. for Kansas State in the first half and the third quarters belong to Oregon. But the key with time of possession is you have to pay it off with points and they weren't able to do that enough when they had chances in the first half and now Oregon has extended their lead. Second and four Hubert got the first down as he got out to the 39 yard line. Let's check in with Holly. Well, Colin Klein's a great leader, guys, but usually he does it by example. He's not a rah-rah guy over on the sideline, so I believe it means something when before this possession he got over, got in the faces of his offensive linemen are like, come on, guys, you've got to help us out here. They were great in the first half, but they've taken a step back trying to get this running game going. That drop line is what's unique. Ten yards rushing is all tonight for Colin Klein. Hubert follows his blockers well and he's got 12 or 13 yards and another first down and he's into duck territory. Keenan Taylor the right guard pulled out in front of him on that play. Good patience that time by Hubert as we tick down to the end of the third quarter. There's still time for them to run the football if they can get some points in this drive. And they're not built offensively to just drop back and throw it every down. Last play of the third quarter, barring a penalty. Klein loads, reloads, and now Collins going to run with it. And made one guy miss, and he got a big gainer down the sideline. To the 32 yard line to end quarter number three. Pocket in motion toward the ball. The Gibbs to Hubert. Cuts it outside, trying to follow his tight end Tannehill, and he got collared on the sideline after a pickup of seven. See, with the entire fourth quarter remaining, if you score a touchdown here you still can have balance in your offense if you don't score here then then you pretty much lose the the value of a running game and so this this drive is critical for Kansas State to not only keep the ball but to score a touchdown so they can maintain balance in their offense Hubert cuts back to the middle and got two actually still not down and now he is Taylor Hart wasn't going to let him go anywhere. Hart, another big defensive end. The two defensive end starters for Oregon are 6'6 six, six and 6'7. Six, Third down and one. Got to be two down territory no matter what. 
for Kansas State. They might not get too many more chances down here near the red zone. Thanks will be a Colin Klein run to the right here. It will be. And I don't know if he got there, Todd. Really close. Just depends on the spot. Tip of the football just touching our yellow line, but of course, the chain gang will come out here to make sure that our line is perfect. Credit the Oregon defense. They knew coming in they were going to face a, a different kind of quarterback in Colin Klein, more designed runs than they've ever seen. And they have made him earn everything running the football tonight. Got it by that much. Yep. So the drive stays alive. Remember their red zone misses tonight. They missed a field goal. They made a field goal and they got a touchdown. And if they get back in here they've got to keep this one going. Again that full house backfield with Wilson the fullback in front of Hubert. Now they may shift to the other side and that might mean option coming this way. Again, the movement of Hamuli, number 90, I think has caused some problems. Throw out Harper makes a nice cut and another one back to the sideline before a whole flock of ducks finally shows up. He got nine yards. I bet Ricky Hamuli's eyes lit up when Nick Aliotti said, you know what we're going to do in this game more of we're going to put you in the game and we're going to let you stand up in a two point stance and play like a linebacker instead of going in there and getting double teamed on the nose the whole game. It's a whole different look. He's on the nose Ooh. right now. And Nick Pitts. <laughs> False start. No 50 on the offense. It's a five yard penalty. Still second down. Fifth penalty I think for Kansas State again that's been one of their strengths coming in one of the least penalized teams in college football averaging three penalties per game and they're already over that mark. And they back themselves up again near the edge of that red zone at the 18. Second down at six. Hubert's been good on this drive. And he's good again. Looks like he might have another first down. Not sure they won't have to have another measurement. Oregon doesn't typically worry about the clock, but right now they're they're kind of content to let Kansas State burn clock. They certainly want to keep them out of the end zone, which they've been able to do pretty successfully tonight. But they don't mind Kansas State using time off the clock right now. In fact. In this third quarter in the second half Oregon has about a four minute advantage in time of possession. Very seldom anymore do you see two measurements on the same series. Both first downs. Bill Snyder who's. Resurrected Kansas State's football program twice in his career Big 12 coach of the year. Stadium's got his name on it. There's a road by the stadium with his name on it. He is Manhattan, Kansas to a lot of people, and he's done a wonderful job with this football team again. They were picked sixth in the preseason polls in the Big 12, and here they are, the Big 12 champs. I think what Colin Klein's trying to say is, hey, guys, we have to pick up our tempo a little bit. You know we're behind a couple scores here. We've got to get in out of the huddle a little bit faster. Get a little more sense of urgency about our business here. Second and eight at the ten. Again looking over that sideline takes extra seconds that might be precious later. Klein shovel pass to Hubert. Nice cutback and in untouched. Touchdown Kansas State. Ten yarder. Great cut by John Hubert on the run. And that's his first touchdown reception of the year. Michael Clay is the guy down on the play. One of the 
the defensive captains, linebackers that Todd was talking about, how active they've been tonight. Tyson Coleman right here is the guy who's going to get played by Colin Klein on the shovel pass. He thinks he's going to get the quarterback, tosses it underneath. Nice job blocking. Keenan Taylor is the guy that was blocking on Michael Clay. Clay looks to be okay. So a good drive, five minutes it took from the end of one quarter to the beginning of the other, but a much needed touchdown. And trying to get it back now to a two possession ball game is Anthony Cantelli. And it's good. So there is hope for Kansas State. Okay, 94 yards for the touchdown. And that sort of set the table for how Oregon's played in this one tonight. And Thomas will have another chance from around the three. Runs out of real estate on the far side and the 29 yard line. Marcus Mariota has not had a big number night. He threw for one touch or two touchdowns, 166 yards passing. He's also run the football effectively, 62 yards and a touchdown. But the thing about it is his poise. He's a redshirt freshman, his first bowl game, and he has uh, kind of had the upper hand. Of course, his offense has a little bit. Colin Klein. Pretty good on that last drive, but uh, a rough night for the most part. Colin Klein finishing his Kansas State career, and he yep. was a Heisman finalist this year. You got to look at Marcus right now with the future he has in front of him, and he might be one of those guys that heads into New York someday. Pick up of a yard for DeAnthony Thomas. Randall Evans made the stop. That's interesting because a lot of people thought Oregon was going to have some problems this year because they were losing Darren Thomas, who had another year of eligibility, could have come back as a starting quarterback. Michael James, their running back was gone. Jim Kelly said, you know what, we knew what we had with Barner and Mariota. And their backup quarterback, Brian Bennett, is pretty good too. Here's Barner for four more. We're under 11 minutes remaining. Barner was one of those guys that was kind of always the second fiddle to Michael James, <laughs> but whenever yeah. he played and got the ball, he was extremely productive. And this year, in his first year as the feature guy, he has had a monster year. He had 195 yards or more rushing four times this year. That's incredible. Mariota fires behind the Anthony Thomas. That one into the dirt. Well, the good thing there for Kansas State, not only do they get the stop, but the clock stops on the incomplete pass. And we'll bring up a punting situation for Jackson Rice. And Colin Klein getting his headgear back on and ready to come back out there. As Todd said, that didn't last long. Only 68 seconds off the clock. Big punt. Jermaine Thompson trying to get his hands on this one. Back pedals made one guy miss at the 10. Now he's got a little bit of a wall, but a flag's going to fly in. Have a illegal block on the return. And a long field facing Colin Klein in Kansas State. Carl Miles might have been the uh, guilty party. On the return, we have a block in the back. Number 19 of the return team. Half distance, first down. Time out on the field. That backs it up, and Kansas State's going to be. The good news is they got the ball back. The bad news is they're a long ways from the end zone. Colin Klein from his own goal line. Flushed out of the pocket. Throws on the run. Completes it out to the 13 to Tyler Lockett. I think with your Kansas State, you got to have a little bit more urgency about you. And you got to be smart to use the field. Use the sidelines to stop the clock. You know the clock stops on first downs. You don't have to go to a straight out hurry up offense, but you have to play with more urgency than you have at any point in the game so far. Three wide outs to Colin Klein's right. But he'll keep it on the ground to Pease. Pease running that way. Got some good blocks from his wide outs. And he got it out around the 28-yard line. 14-yard run by Angelo Pease. 
Nice little change up with Pease. Looked like he was going to bust this all the way outside. And he made a nice quick cut. Planted that right foot, cut inside for the first down. And again, the clock stops as they reset the chains. And you're back ready to snap the football. With about nine and a half minutes remaining, they'll get the snap. And now we've got false start again. This time it's Cornelius Lucas. 78 offense. It's a five yard penalty. Still first down. Well, that one just flat looked like he didn't know the snap count. That's the seventh penalty against Kansas State. And that's a lot for them. I think Kansas State's taking too much time at the line of scrimmage. Joe. At this point, you're not going to get the perfect play called from the sideline. Yeah. You got to go up there, let Colin Klein, your senior quarterback, call more from the line of scrimmage and run your offense. And here he is trying to run to get back to the line of scrimmage, the original line of scrimmage, and can't get there. We got a couple. Now, again, as Todd says, you got to get lined up and go because we're under nine minutes now remaining. Remember they used one of their timeouts way back at the very beginning of the third quarter. They need Lockett to make a big play for him in the slot. And he's a guy that could create a big play opportunity. Crossing route to Lockett but only a gain of three. That's about all they've completed is some of those short crossing routes tonight. Again, you know, this Oregon defense that's played well, and they've played some good wide receivers and quarterbacks in the Pac 12. That's what you face week in and week out. I don't think they feel threatened down the field by these Kansas State wide receivers. Harper is up to the top of your screen. And again, way too much time being used. Third and nine for the Wildcats. Klein. Throws and in and out of the hands of Tremaine Thompson. Broken up by Troy Hill on the sideline. And so they started at their own eight yard line and could only get out to around the 28th. And they're going to have to kick it away. Braylon Addison has been doing a great job on fair catching. Tonight for Oregon on the punt returns, and he's got to be sure handed about this one, too. There's the fair catch. He bumped into his own man, and he still made the catch. <laughs> Tell you what, this guy's got pretty good hands. Yeah. He caught that one on his back, didn't he? He did. Straight BCS game, and they've got the lead with 7.38 remaining. Kenyon Barner. Out close to the 45 yard line. They kept him in check in the first half, yeah. but he's gotten going in the second. They kept him in check because they changed the line of scrimmage. And, and the front of Kansas State controlled the game in the first half. That's not been the situation here in the second half. The Oregon offensive line has had the better of it, and that means more space and more creases for Kenyon Barner. And Kenyon is up to 93 on the ground. Here's Oregon everybody looking to the sideline taking as much clock as they can working it down under the seven minute mark before their next snap. Marner again with second effort gets the first down. You know regardless of what happens with Chip Kelly. The, the reality is this is a young talented football team. I mean, you've got 65 freshmen and sophomores on this football team right now. And a lot of your key players are coming back next year for whoever is the head coach of the Oregon Ducks. And again, they milk the clock for as much as they can here with a first down at the 49 yard line. Mariota with Marner in the backfield. Gives it off to him again, and Kenyon. Almost broke that one. Nigel Malone holding on for dear life. Still a 15 yard pickup, and he's over 100 yards on the night. Now, just again, you give him a little crease. He didn't have much room in the first half. He didn't get frustrated. He didn't get discouraged. He just kept 
Staying with it. And now because they got a chunk play out of it, they go back to somewhat of a hurry up offense. You were talking with us today about that. When they get a big play, they tend yep. to turn around and want to get another big play on you. Yeah, no matter where they are in the game, you know, even though it behooves them to use as much clock as possible right now, that's just not their nature. They're, they're going to do what they do. <laughs> there you go. No huddle, no mercy. Now they do slow it again to get it down closer to the five minute mark. High snap, he gets it to Barner anyway, and Kenyon's got another first down. Well, Childs made the stop, but six more yards, and they move the chains again. At the 24, first down. Mariota wants to snap and now we'll stand back up look to the sideline get it down under five minutes Talk leading by 15. Talk about the youth of this team I mean, you look at that offensive line you've got two seniors at the guard position but a sophomore center a red shirt freshman left tackle and Tyler Johnstone and a sophomore right tackle. Barner with a stiff arm on Brown of all people. Would you see him stay in bounds too. <laughs> Smart play by Kenyon trying to keep the clock going, staying in bounds. Th again, you know, they didn't change the plays they called. They're just starting to control the line of scrimmage now. They still st stick with the same running plays. It's just a different look now for Kenyon Barner because the offensive line has gotten control of the line of scrimmage. Six straight run by the Ducks. And it's all working for him and Kenyon Barner starting to take over and that offensive line as Todd said doing its job and they've got it down at the 12 yard line of Kansas State trying to ice this thing away Kenyon Barner down near the six. Kenyon Barner approaching the school record for all purpose yards. <laughs> wow. That's a lot of production. Second down and four. They can get a first down at the two yard line. The way Barner's been finding openings right now, it might not take them that long to get in the end zone again. Four minute drive, and they worked it down to three and a half to go in the ball game. Barner slips, took himself out of that play. The one question I would have about Oregon as you look ahead as Barner leaves and, and his replacement as the feature back the Anthony Thomas there's about a 20 pound difference in weight yep. you know and you see Barner right now running a lot of inside runs and he's not a guy who's going to run over you but he's strong enough to run inside and you know, can the Anthony Thomas take that same kind of pounding on inside runs uh, that'll be a big question how much weight he can gain without losing his speed and his elusiveness that makes him so special. Myron Marshall might come into play there yep. too the true freshman who's put up some pretty good numbers despite being the number three guy. And again they'll bring Kenyon down shy of the five yard line. But the important part is how much clock the Ducks used yeah. on this drive they really didn't need any more points. But they have used five minutes and four seconds. Kansas State's going to take its second timeout. They've got one remaining and just two and a half remaining in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Bonato for a 23 yard field goal attempt. Trying to make it 35 17. And Maldonado does. Ten play drive, over five minutes used up. And Kenyon Barner does a wonderful job getting them down there to get the field goal that's just going to pretty much ice this. Two and a half minutes remaining. We talked about three hours ago who was going to get their ball game in their hands. And for a half, yeah. almost a half, it looked almost like Kansas State until that 46 yard touchdown drive at the end of the second yeah. and uh, you know, quarter. Th they set the tempo. They possessed the ball. They didn't score enough points when they had opportunity. Right. And to beat Oregon, you have to score points. And then Oregon, starting with that last minute of the first half and then into the second half, 
took over the game and, and set their tempo for the game. And you know the thing I'm impressed with, Brad, I'm impressed with the focus of the Oregon team. Yeah. So much rumor speculation about Chip Kelly. Is he even going back with the team tomorrow? Is he going to stay here and interview with some NFL teams? Not just him, not just the players, but the assistant coaches, because right. we asked Nick Eliotti, has he said anything to you guys? He Nothing. hasn't said anything. <laughs> and those are guys that are more concerned about where they might be and what their future might be, the assistant coaches, than the head coach. You know Chip's going to wind up okay, whatever he does. Right. It's the assistants who there's a little bit more uncertainty with. And uh, those guys all have kept their focus and their attention to detail and uh, put together a another masterful BCS Bowl performance their four straight BCS Bowl and now they've got a 35 to 17 lead they came in number four now depending on what goes on on Monday night they could finish as high as second in the country in the final standings depending on if Alabama was to beat Notre Dame but if Notre Dame made it a two point game or something that might still be number one and number two but Oregon still has a case because the only game they haven't they haven't lost in regulation this year the only yeah. game they lost was to Stanford in overtime and speaking of number one and number two Monday night discover BCS national championship number one Notre Dame number two Alabama coverage starts on Monday 8 Eastern on ESPN and also live on watch ESPN you know last year in Alabama's championship win over LSU it was AJ McCarron's coming out party right. throwing the ball on first down beautiful night could this be the coming out party for Everett Golson, the quarterback for Notre Dame? It'll be a fun game to watch. He certainly improved as the season's gone along. Golston, that is. And A.J. had another wonderful year for the Tide. Colin Klein getting set to end his career at Kansas State, and it's going to end with an interception. Eric Dargan bringing it back the other way. And finally run out of bounds. 31 yard interception return as we take a look at the direct TV ultimate picture cam replay of this one well both interceptions for Colin Klein kind of in desperation mode right at the end of the first half and desperately needing a big play down the field double coverage nicely played by the safety coming to help Dargan and the last Kansas State drive probably snuffed out one play. Not the way Colin wanted to go out with a two interception night after a brilliant career. And the joy that was on his wife Shalen's face earlier when he scored a touchdown it's uh, dissipated and for this Kansas State crowd. Also that has taken an effect and I mean they came in full force to back this team in this uh, those Dina's Fiesta Bowl. There's a lot of purple in this building, but a lot of it is filed out now. And it's the Ducks fans that are having a good time. Well, you know, these are two outstanding football teams, but I mean, Oregon uh, coming in, most people thought was a little bit better, and uh, through the course of 60 minutes has proven that they're a little bit better. This is a, a team that was. You know, a missed field going overtime, potentially away from playing for national championship. Yep. And with a minute and a half to play, Marcus Mariota is going to take a knee here. We want to thank our crew for a sensational year. Scott Johnson and Phil Dean in the truck, our leaders up here in the booth, Clint Deans, Pat McGrath, the best in the business, our spotter. And statistician and uh, everybody, all our guys in the tape and all our camera people, uh, we're a family on the road. So the family splits up after tonight and goes separate directions. Some to basketball, some to other things. Well, I go to watch basketball. That's you what go I'm to talking broadcast. about. Basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Another knee, and that's about going to do it. Now the Oregon Ducks proved. That they are indeed worthy of their ranking. Chip Kelly getting hugged by his players on the sideline. They're wondering right now, I'm sure, if they'll get a chance to hug him again next year. And got to take one more snap, I guess. Bill Snyder again, a remarkable year for his Wildcats, but they're going to finish 
11 and 2. And the final score is 35 to 17. Two really good coaches and much different philosophies and approaches probably. One's old school and one couldn't be any more new wave. But a heck of a football game and I know a lot of respect between those two guys. Colin Klein has brilliant career Kansas State comes to a close. Hopefully for him there's an opportunity maybe in the NFL and maybe at some other position. Most people don't think he's a quarterback. But another BCS win for Chip Kelly. He's with Holly Rowe. Well, Coach, the tempo of this game really started to change in your six.